Or, here's a thought, I could go up behind me, or what I could do, no, I'll kind of have to go over the mountains there. I tell you, it's difficult to find a place to have an emergency. Hello. You find me once again underneath the wing of Victor Oscar Tango. Um, can't see it back there for the light. Anyway, it doesn't matter. This is my last flight before my flight exam on Wednesday. Um, yeah. I do my flight test on Wednesday, so I'm just going to go up and do some air work practice, some stuff that I need to practice, and, and this is it. This is the last uh, flight before um, my flight test. Still got to do my written test before I actually get the license, but um, but yeah, this is, uh, hope it goes well, because this is, this is about it. Anyway, so we're just going to do some practice. We're going to practice some stuff. This is basically going to be what, um, what I do a lot of basically from now on it's going to be you know if I decide to go flying or if I can afford to go flying um, take the plane go up practice some maneuvers and stuff and uh, yeah just do this and hopefully one day get the private and you know, and we'll see what happens from there I'm going to climb to uh, 4500 or so Give myself lots of space to do these maneuvers. I gotta practice some forced landings again. Forced landings are no fun. I imagine they would be less fun if I was actually doing it. We're so approaching Savannah. Uh, and there's a bunch of fields out beyond it, so we're gonna practice a forced landing out in the fields out beyond it. In fact, I think I spotted my field. Hi, it's Paul from the future, so just as a disclaimer, do keep in mind that anything you see in my video is not meant to be instructional. Uh, so if you were thinking, oh, well, I'm going to watch Paul's video and I'm going to know how to do this maneuver or do that, you are clinically insane and need to seek help. Uh, so just uh, keep that in mind. If you do want to do these maneuvers or you want to learn how to fly a plane, please talk to a qualified instructor because that then you won't die. Back to the video. Oh no, my engine suddenly stopped working. Quickly pull the car, Pete. Uh, we're going to just hold this altitude for a bit. We're going to on a pitch for 65, so we're just going to hold, bring up the plane slow down. Uh, I see the field out in front of me, so I am super high for the field out in front of me, okay? So I need to lose some altitude, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn this way first. We are heading toward land, towards the mountain, so i got to be a little bit aware of that. But we're super high, we got time. Yeah, so the engine's not starting, so we're kind of hooped. So we're going to basically kill the engine. So mixture's going to go full lean, fuel's going to go off, uh, car peats on, and then we're going to do this stuff. So we've got uh, one, two, one decimal five. We're calling a mayday. Block seventy-seven hundred. Turn on the ELT. All right. So at this point, I'm going to say this is probably good. So we're going to put in some flaps. We're a little high, but that's okay. Better high, than, better too high than too low. Quite frankly, we're just going to make the field. That's all we got to do is make the field. So yeah, we have definitely made the field going around. So full power. So yeah, I just gotta remember those uh, those cause checks basically. Like when you have that, I, I gave myself a lot of time to do that. So making sure I check to make sure that the uh, making sure I check to make sure that everything is sure. And check it again to be sure. So you need to have five solo hours to be able to do your uh, recreational license flight test. After my flight last Wednesday, I, I had 4.8. <laughs> if I had literally done like one or two more circuits, it would have been fine, but the weather was kind of closing in, it was starting to rain a little bit, like it was just, it was the whole thing. So I'm like, no, no, let me just get it put down or whatever, and then I got back and realized, oh, whoops. All right, let's practice some slow flight. Let's practice some slow flight. So before we do any maneuvers, what do we do? We do a hazel check. Height area, security, engine, lookout. So height, we're 4,500 feet, lots of, 4,500 feet over the lake, so we've got lots of height. Uh, the area, there's population, there's population there, not many great places for an emergency landing, as it turns out, as I found out earlier, but we're going this way, so if I need to, there's fields up to my left, fields straight ahead, there's actually some fields up in the valley up there as well, so we have options if things go south. Hopefully they don't, hopefully we keep going west. Security, so cabin's all secure, everything's good, things tied down in the back, everything's good. Uh, engine, T's and P's in the green, uh, primer master may have taken care of. Uh, we're gonna pre-pull in the carpet here momentarily. Um, air mixture's good, everything's good, fuel's set to both, that sort of thing. 
and look out, is there traffic around? So we're going to do some clearing turns and we're going to do slow flights. So let's start with a turn to that way. So a quick look, don't see any traffic, but we are going to turn this way first, so let's turn. And no traffic high on my left, no traffic low on my right. I'm going to do a couple 90 degree turns, basically. High on the right looks clear, don't see anything. Low on the left looks clear, except for some boats in the water, but if I crash into them, we have bigger problems on our hands. It was nice complete. Area is clear. So, let's, uh, let's do some slow flight. So we're going to pull the power. Car beat first, then we're going to pull the power. We're going to pull the power back to about 1,700 or so. We're going to try and maintain altitude. Pulling my nose up, we're going to trim a little bit for it. Okay, going to put in some flaps to increase my stall speed. Then 20 flaps. All right, we're starting to slow down. We're going to start adding a little bit of power. Listening for the stall horn. We're actually increasing altitude right now, so... I think I hear the stall horn. There it is. A little bit of stall. And we are in slow flight. We've got the stall horn, fairly sluggish ailerons. Uh, very nose high attitude. We're in slow flight. All right, so while I'm in slow flight, wow, I just looked down while I'm in slow flight. I am crawling, I'm going 37, 30, 38 knots over the ground right now. A little bit high, I'm gonna pull some power out. Crosswind from the right. power. Gently pull it to cruise. And keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. Bit of a balloon, that's okay, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. All right, you know what? Not too shabby. And it, the reason it was pretty good is because it was intentional, right? I, uh, I wanted to get my left, my right main down first, and I did. Um... Um, so that was good. Alright, so it's Wednesday, the whatever day, the 13th or whatever. Um, I'm going on my flight test right now. The instructor is just outside talking with uh, Riley right now. Um, um, so yeah, I'm just doing the pre-flight, getting everything ready to uh, to go fly. I keep looking at myself, but looking at the camera. Um, I'm just going to put that down for a second. So yeah, um, just getting ready to do this. This is my, my flight test finally. We'll see how it goes. I'm not going to be filming it, obviously, because that might be... I don't even know if I'm allowed to do that. I passed. I got through it. I did pass. The examiner was actually great. Gave me a lot of, like, notes on what I need to improve on and that sort of thing, uh, so, which was awesome. So I know I need to be practicing now, but um, flight test done. So now it's on to the written test, and yeah. I don't really have time to celebrate with a donut right now, but maybe another time. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome. You join me just passing through 1,700 feet uh, on a westbound departure of uh, Kamloops International Pearson Field Airport Terradrome thing. I also found out recently that um, I thought just with the written test I could just uh, um, just sit the written test whenever I felt like I was ready. But you have to be recommended to write the written test. You actually have to have a letter from your flight instructor saying, yes, this guy is ready to, this person is ready to write the written test, um, just like you do with the flight test. So basically, I'm going to make this a short flight, and um, then I'm going to go back to the flight school, write another mock test, or go over the results from my previous mock test, possibly write another mock test, and hope that tomorrow, when I plan to write the actual written test, I can still actually write the written test. That is still the hope. But for now, uh, a few things I want to work on today. I want to work on some slow flight. Well, actually, what I need to work on is, is the rudder, basically. I'm going to work on some slow flight and coming out of slow flight, which is where I can, I'm not putting in the rudder. So I need to make sure I can keep my heading uh, when I come out of slow flight. Um, I need to uh, do some stalls and some stall recovery. And then again, same thing, when I come out of, when I come out of the stall, apply appropriate right rudder. And... Um, 
Something else I can't remember. And then uh, we'll go back in, maybe do a couple circuits, and we'll call it call it good. So, slow flight. Let's do some slow flight. So to do slow flight, basically what we do is I'm going to pull the power back to like something. Back to quite low. Basically, I'm just trying to try and hold my altitude. So as I slow down, put in some flaps. Still slowing down, put in more flaps. More flaps. A stall warning horn, so right rudder as I put in the power. Try and hold my heading, heading at about 080 right now. Should have paid attention to when I was going in. There we go. I mean, we are stable in slow flight right now. We're just below 5,000 feet, traveling 50 knots over the ground. Indicated it's about 35 knots through the air. All right, so what we do come out of slow flight is we nose over with full power, flaps 20 right away. Got positive airspeed, flaps 10. Don't want to lose too much altitude. We're at full power, that's fine. I probably should have pulled the carpet on that, completely forgot. And flaps up, positive rate. Okay, that was actually not too bad. I don't think I held my heading going into the slow flight, but I think that uh, I held my heading pretty well in the slow flight and pretty well coming out of the slow flight, and I held my altitude. That's probably one of the best slow flights I've ever done, to be honest with you. Anyways, okay, so let's do a stall. Um, so how are we stalling? We're gonna do a power off stall. Um, so when I come with the, that's actually a good idea. We're gonna do power off stall, so that way when I come into the recovery, um, I have to make sure I got that right rudder in there. So let's reduce the power, and so we're just gonna go power idle, carpet on. Uh, we're just gonna try and hold my altitude. Losing a bit of altitude. That's okay. Keep pulling back. Keep pulling back. Waiting for the nose to go. There it goes. Break the stall. Right rudder. What I didn't do was look at my heading going into that. We're here for time, by the way. It turns out that at 3 p.m. today, they're closing the main runway in Kamloops for maintenance. for closing it for two hours. Um, to everything except for like scheduled passenger flights, scheduled commercial flights. So I need to be off the runway. I mean, I can land on the small runway if I really wanted to, and I don't. But yeah, I need to make sure I am on the ground and off the runway by 3 by three p.m., which is an hour and five minutes from now. All right, so I'm going to aim to land on the 1,000-foot markers. That is my goal. That is my goal in life right now. A little, little bit high. It'll be a bit less bumpy. Nose over a little bit, going a bit slower, right at 60 knots, which is perfect. You're holding 60, beautiful. I'm not Look at that, that's downwind, zero nine for stop and go. Tokyo Delta Roger, uh, traffic update 172, short final zero nine for touch and go. And uh, probably about three mile final, runway zero nine for touch and go is the Archer. Roger, Tokyo Delta, we'll confirm our traffic inside. Tokyo Delta Roger. So I finished that flight, and I couldn't avoid it any longer. Had to review my last mock exam. Um, it was bad. It was pretty bad. I would have failed it. If it was the actual exam, I would have failed it on one question. You have to get 60% to pass, but you, there are four different sections on the exam, and you have to get at least 60% on each individual section as well. So um, even if you get, you know, 90%, but you bomb one section, you still fail the test. So I would have failed it regardless. Either way, with the mock test that, that they do, that they, get, that they give me, they want me to get 75% across the board um, before they'll give me the referral to do the written test. So I took another mock exam this afternoon. Um, now, actually, it's evening. I took another mock exam after my flight. Um, and I'm just waiting for uh, for Riley to get back. Just timing was just didn't totally work out. Riley had to go up with another student, so he's actually flying right now. I actually just saw them. I can actually see them off there. So yeah, once Riley is back, I can uh, review my latest mock exam. Hopefully, I got a high enough mark that they'll, they'll let me do the actual one tomorrow as I planned. 
Um, and, but we'll see. So we'll know here, hopefully, in the next half hour, 45 minutes, whether or not I'll get to write the actual exam tomorrow. Well, it's the next day now, you can tell because I've shaved. Just went over uh, yesterday's exam with Praveen. Um, yeah, I didn't actually get 75% across the board on the exam, so I didn't get to write the final today. I was supposed to have written the final. Actually, I was supposed to have just started writing the exam right now. I uh, managed to come in early, go over what I went wrong. Basically, they just want to make sure I, well, I only have to do it once. I was thinking like, oh, I'll just keep doing it over and over again every month or whatever until I pass it. But they kind of want to make sure like, let's just get you ready to do it once, call it good kind of thing. So fair, totally fair. The tentative plan right now is I come in, write another practice exam tomorrow. And then uh, if that goes well enough, maybe write the final on Sunday. Um, that's kind of the, the tentative plan right now. So we'll see. We'll see how tomorrow goes. But I'm going to go home and study and um, see how it goes. Well, it is the 23rd and I just wrote uh, the last practice exam they have uh, at the flight school. Um, did better overall, but still did not get the 75% across all of my, all of the sections of the exam that I needed. So. Praveen's the senior instructor. He has to he has to be the one to give me the clearance to write the actual uh, the actual test. Um, and but the funny thing about it is that the sections I didn't quite get. I think I was off by like one question on a couple of these sections. Um, but those are the sections I did really well at before. So apparently I'm good at guessing. Either way, we'll see if they let me write the the, the final test just to get me out of their hair. Um, but yeah, it's it's my memory is not good. I really struggle with memory, so it's going to be a bit of a war of attrition. If I end up failing the actual test, it's going to be a bit of a war of attrition, I think, just to try to grind out, you know, grind the stuff into my brain. So, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, it's the 24th, and long story short, I'm going to go write my written test right now. So, um, uh, yeah, basically, based on my test scores and the things I've been doing, long story short, anyway, like I say. But yeah, I'm going to head in, write the test. Don't want to get too far ahead of myself, so if I pass, um, then we'll talk about the future, and if I fail, then we won't just yet. So, here we go. <laughs> oh. Uh. Well. I passed. Oh. Okay, well, um, yeah, I passed 83.8%. Um, I passed. I was worried about trying to get 60%, and my worst section was like 77%. So, uh, it's all over about the crying now. I just need to put in the application. Uh, there's some forms to fill out, some paperwork to do, but that's it that's i have successfully completed all the requirements to get a recreational pilot's license so yeah i mean on to the next one right i mean now that now i need to start thinking about how i'm going to do what the plan is to get the private license now uh so no rest for the wicked but um <laughs> Whew. i mean donut So, long story short, I did not get my donut. The good news is that any flight I take next month uh, will be as a fully licensed uh, recreational pilot license. Hi, uh, it's Paul from the future. So this whole time I've been calling it a recreational pilot license. It's actually the recreational pilot permit. Uh, the private level is a license, but the recreational level is a permit. So uh, I know I've been getting that wrong. So yeah, don't at me. Back to the whispering. Uh, but I'll show you the reason I'm whispering here in one second. But uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a month.